I'm just going to be sharing something with you today from the Word of God, and uh, hopefully it will be helpful and will inspire you and and challenge you in this season. Uh, Let me just pray uh, before we get into this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Word to us, and I pray today that I will just be a mouthpiece for you to speak to your people. Father, that it will be a message that will touch hearts and will change lives, Father, so that uh, we are better prepared and ready to step into the plans and the purposes that you have for each and every one of us. So, Lord God, I just ask that you will breathe upon your church this morning as we hear your word spoken to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles uh, or your devices, then we're going to be in Genesis 19 today. So you can start uh, turning to that. Now, today is Father's Day, uh, of course, and I'm very much looking forward to being pampered today, children, and uh, being spoiled. And I hope all you dads uh, have have maybe had breakfast in bed made for you or at least a cup of coffee and that you're going to be looked after today and treated in some nice way. Um, But I just want to put it out there and say that my message today isn't necessarily based on Father's Day. We have a a great God who is uh, the best father, the ultimate father and I could have spoken on that but um, I just had a real sense that God had something else he wanted to to say to us today, and we're going to be speaking about that. Um, There is a tenuous link because Abraham uh, is known as the father of the nations. And I don't know about you, but in Sunday school, uh, we used to sing a song, Father Abraham had many sons. You may have sung that one. And so Father uh, Abraham was a father to the nations. But to the person Lot, uh, Abraham was an uncle. And Lot was married, and it's Lot's wife that we're going to be basing uh, this morning's message on. So there you go. There's a, there's a very tenuous link to uh, fathering on this Father's Day Sunday morning. But back to the Word of God and Genesis 19. Now the context of uh, the verses that we're going to read, and then one particular verse I want to pull out to base this message on this morning, is that uh, God had seen... Uh, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities. And he had decided that he was going to destroy those cities. It says in Genesis 18 verse 20 that God had heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin was so flagrant. And then uh, through the rest of chapter 18 into 19, um, Abraham starts bargaining with God for Sodom and Gomorrah and saying that if you find a number of of righteous people, good people, would you spare the cities? And they managed to whittle it down until eventually there's a very, very small uh, remnant of good people that God says, if I find those people in those cities, I will not destroy them. Then we get into chapter 19 and uh, two angels of the Lord come to Sodom and Gomorrah and they meet with Lot. And while they are there, God sees firsthand the, the extent of the, of the sin and the wickedness of the people in those cities. And he decides that the destruction will go ahead after all. And it's in that context that uh, Lot and his family are to be spared and they are told that they must flee the city. And what I just want to read today is Genesis 19, starting at verse 15 and going through to 26. And it says this, that at dawn the next morning, the angels became insistent. Hurry up, they said to Lot, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out right now or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. Now, when Lot still hesitated, the angel seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city, for the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. Oh no, my Lord, Lot begged. You have been so gracious to me and saved my life and you have shown such great kindness, but I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up with me there and I would soon die. Look, there is a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. 
All right, said the angel, I will grant your request. I will not destroy that little village, but hurry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. Lot reached the village just as the sun was rising over the horizon. And then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them along with the other cities and villages of the plain, wiping out all the people and every bit of vegetation. And here's this morning's key verse. Verse 26, but Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him and she turned into a pillar of salt. And that's our starting point for this morning. I just wanted to paint the picture and give you the context. But the message this morning is based on this, that Lot's wife looked back and she was turned into a pillar of salt. And the message that I feel God wants to speak to us all today, and maybe particularly to some of you tuning in, is don't get stuck looking back. Don't get stuck looking back. You know, we all have a past. We all have a history that has brought us to this moment in time. There's a, there's a great song uh, that I came across a few years back. It's called Come So Far. But one of the lines in the song is that the road is filled with twists and turns, but it's the road that got us here. You see, we've all been on different journeys. We've all traveled different roads to get to this moment in time. And, and at this moment in time, we are kind of sharing this shared journey this shared experience of, of lockdown, of social restriction, of, of our way of life having to have been changed for this period of time. And even in this context, as we, there is a temptation to look back over the, the past 12, 13 weeks or so, that we seem to have lost of, of normal life, of normal service, of gathering together in church buildings, of being able to go to the shops and, and do all the things we used to love doing. There is a temptation to look back instead of looking forward to what God has in store. That temptation became too strong for Lot's wife and she looked back and it cost her her future. It cost her her destiny, all because she chose to look back instead of keeping her eyes looking forward as she had been instructed to do. You know, a note that I read on this in my Bible said this, we need to resist the temptation to linger in the quicksand of past mistakes, your own or other people's. When you get bogged down in the past, you miss what God has for you in the present and you fail to see the connection to the future. You see, Lot's wife shows us that looking back can lead to our destruction. It can lead to us missing out on all that God has purposed and planned for us in the future. So don't be like Lot's wife. Let's not be people that get stuck looking back and then missing out on all that God has for us in the days that are to come. Having said that, it is important for all of us to address our past. Like I said, we've all been on different journeys. We've all traveled different roads that have led us to this moment in time. And along the way, there have been the good times, the great times, the times of celebration. But there have also been the bad times the difficult times, the times of suffering, the times of hardship. And we need to address these things so that we can move on properly. You see, the thing is, and, and here's a blunt moment, the thing is we can't change the past. We can't do anything about what has already happened. What we can do is learn from it, experience what God wants to teach us through it, and then lean into God for our future. So we look, we listen, we learn, and then we lean in to what God has in store for us. You know, we are all called to run a race. And the writer of Hebrews says in chapter 12, verse 1, that we are to strip off 
every weight that slows us down. And for some of us, there may be things in the past that are like weights that we are carrying and they're stopping us from running a race that God has called us to run. And so in this context, we don't want to get stuck looking back so that we miss out on our destiny and our purpose. But we do have to deal with some of the things in the past so that we can then run the race that God has called us to run. So I've come up with this thing. We need to reflect, we need to reject, and then we need to reconnect. We need to reflect on things from our past, reject the bad, the weight that is going to slow us down, and then reconnect with the God who holds our destiny and our purpose in his hands so that we can run the race. And as we do this, I believe there are three things that God can do for us and that I just want to unpack a little bit more this morning. We can find that wounds can be healed, wisdom can be gained, and weaknesses can be transformed. So first up, wounds can be healed. God can heal wounds that have been inflicted that we've inflicted on ourselves, maybe in some ways, through our our mistakes, our foolishness, our sin. But God can heal wounds that have been inflicted upon us by other people as well. And, and, you know, today, just to acknowledge that today is, is Father's Day. And for some of you, that's not a great day with great memories. Because maybe you have wounds that have been inflicted by a father by some kind of bad relationship, abusive relationship. And and a father figure is not something that you remember in a good way. But God, the good father, the good, good father, wants to heal your wounds this morning so that you are free to move into your future and your destiny. Here are some promises from scripture as we think about this. Psalm 147 verse 3 says that he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. God heals the brokenhearted. You know, maybe you've had your heart broken and somewhere in your past, your heart has has been broken. It's all out of shape. You know, God today wants to mend your broken heart. God, the father, the good, good father, wants to mend your broken heart. He wants to heal your heart because otherwise there is a risk that you get stuck looking back at situations, looking back at at times in your life when your heart has been broken. And God doesn't want us looking back. He wants us looking forward today. Maybe you still have wounds from your past that, that cause you pain today and again I believe that God wants to address some of these he wants to to heal those wounds so that the pain can be eased and and the the pain can be replaced with peace and, and promise his promise it says that God will bandage our wounds and and I like that idea of God coming alongside us and and bandaging our wounds because because what is the purpose of a bandage It's to protect an area, to protect an injury so that it can heal and be restored. That's why we bandage things up. God wants to bandage areas of our lives so that they can be healed and restored. He wants to heal the wounds of your past. I remember uh, a cycling accident I had, Not not my cycling accident of 2017 where I injured my back. Uh, This was my cycling accident of 2013, where uh, I suffered injuries to my hand and and had broken bones in my hand. And I was bandaged up. Uh, I had a cast on the hand so that it could uh, recover and get healed. And it was all bandaged, bandaged up properly. And the thing is that the hand is now fine. It works perfectly well, which is great because I am right handed. And uh, it, it's, it's okay, and it functions, and I, I have a hand to move into my future. But the thing is, if you look closely, and I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up, but my hand isn't quite the same. 
I don't have knuckles on, uh, on the, the two uh, fingers over here. You see, it's healed, it's restored, but it's now a different shape. And I believe that as God heals and restores us, he mends broken hearts, he heals wounds, but we may come out of things a different shape. And that is okay. That is okay because God will then use that different shape in our future. He will use it to speak to other people, to challenge other people, to be able to get alongside other people. We shouldn't be ashamed of the shape that we are now because of the experiences we've been through. We shouldn't try to hide the shape that we are now. We need to lay it before God and ask God to use that shape in our future. God wants to heal wounds. He wants to restore. He wants to mend broken hearts. Isaiah 58 verse 8 says that your salvation will come like the dawn. Your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. You see, God doesn't just want to heal a wound. He wants to restore you and lead you into a future. It's not just about mending something for here and now. It's about restoring you so that you're fully equipped to run the race that God has set before you. And as you do that, he will then protect you and hem you in so that we don't have to, again, spend our lives looking back at the things of the past. We can move forward with God, knowing his protection and his guidance and his healing. And how can we be sure of all of this? How do we know that this is true and that God can do this for us? Well, we just have to look at the person of Jesus Christ. When he went to the cross, he suffered physical wounds. And 1 Peter 2, 24 tells us that it's by his wounds we are healed. Because of what Jesus Christ suffered on his way to the cross and on the cross, you and I can know healing for our wounds today. So that we don't have to get stuck looking back at them, going over them. We can address them. We can reflect on them. Then we can reject the pain and, and the stuff that weighs us down. And we can reconnect with the God of our future. The second thing is that wisdom can be gained. There's a popular saying that we learn from our mistakes. And that's kind of just common sense, isn't it? Because if you do something wrong here, then you can learn from, from that and you can move forward and hopefully do it better next time. But I don't know about you, if I'm really honest, I don't always learn from my mistakes. I make the same mistakes over and over again. I may learn, I may tweak things a little bit, but I still go back and do the same things wrong. And maybe then you're stuck with, with this kind of um, back catalogue of mistakes you've made. And again, there is a temptation for us to start looking back at our history of mistakes in a particular area. God doesn't want us to do that. God doesn't want us to be like Lot's wife looking back. He wants us to be trusting him and looking forward. Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb, he didn't just do it the first time. He had hundreds, thousands of different attempts. And when somebody said to him, how did it feel to get it wrong so many times? He said, hey, I did not fail. I found 10,000 ways that didn't work. But you see, he persisted, he pressed on, and eventually he found the way that worked. We need to learn the lessons from those times that we didn't get it right from those times that we maybe feel that we failed, we let others down, we let God down. We learn from those times, we get wisdom and understanding so that we're better equipped for our future. We reflect, we reject the negativity of those things, then we reconnect with the God of our future. Proverbs 3.13 says, Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. This is what we need to be doing when we look at the areas where we've made mistakes, is we learn from them. We, we get wisdom and understanding so that we're better equipped to move forward. 
It's interesting, though, that the verses preceding this, Proverbs 13, 11 and 12, are talking about God's discipline. And it says this, My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those that he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. You see, when, not if, when we make mistakes because we're all human, we need to humbly allow God to correct us. Not to kind of shut up shop and let our pride say, oh no, there's nothing wrong, I don't need help. We need to allow God to come and bring his discipline, bring his correction. And as we do that, we find his wisdom and we gain his understanding so that we can learn from our mistakes and we can move forward. We don't get stuck looking back at the mistakes and all the things that we've done wrong over our lives. We learn from those things and we move forward. I came across this anonymous quote. They said, don't carry your mistakes around with you. Instead, place them under your feet and use them as stepping stones. I love that idea. Don't carry your mistakes around with you because they become one of those things that weigh us down and that we need to then strip off. Instead, we lay them down before God. We gain wisdom, we gain understanding, and then we use those things as stepping stones into the future that God has for us. The Apostle Paul, he speaks to the church in Philippi and in Philippians 3, he talks about how he, uh, he doesn't mean to say he's already achieved these things, that he's reached perfection, but he presses on to try and reach that perfection. And he says, I have not achieved it. I focus on this one thing, forgetting what is past. I press on looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race. Philippians 3, 12 and 13. That is what you and I need to do. We reflect on our mistakes. We learn the lessons, but then we reject any negativity, any accusations, condemnation, any baggage, and we reconnect with the God of our future. So, wounds can be healed. Wisdom can be gained. And finally this morning, weakness can be transformed. You see, we all have weaknesses. That just comes with being human. But if a weakness keeps us looking backwards over our shoulder, focusing on stuff we can't do or areas where we're weak, then again, we're going to miss out on what God has for us as we need to look forward. We need to address those things. I'm a firm believer that we all have different strengths. That is how God designed us. That's what the body of Christ is about. Paul speaks about the body in 1 Corinthians 12, that we're all different parts. You know, we are not all meant to be hands or or feet or knees or noses or eyes. We all have different strengths. That is okay. We're not all meant to be great at everything. But if there is a weakness in our life that isn't about ability and gifting and stuff, it's more about character, it's more about behavior, then those things need to be addressed. Bad habits, wrong attitudes, recurring sins, we need to allow God to transform these weaknesses in us so that we can then press on, not looking back, being kept in the past with them, but looking forward to what God has purposed and planned for us. I love how Max Licardo puts it, the American author. He said that God loves you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you like that because he wants you to be just like Jesus. God wants to to chisel away at those weaknesses and to make us strong so that we can press on. It's time to boast about our weaknesses. That's what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 12 when he's writing to the church at Corinth. He has asked God uh, countless times to remove a weakness from him, a physical weakness, and God says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. So Paul goes on to say, Now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure 
in my weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Look at what Paul says here. He talks about his weaknesses, his insults, his hardships, his persecutions and his troubles. These, to me, sound like things that could have kept Paul looking back in the past. The difficult times that he's been through, the struggles that he's faced, the suffering that he's endured, that could have kept him looking back at situations. But instead, he doesn't. He turns to God and he allows God to transform his weaknesses into strength so that he can press on. And then it goes on to say, he says in Philippians later, that he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. It's in our areas of weakness, the areas that could weigh us down, we need to ask God to transform us. So that again, we're not stuck looking back at them constantly. We deal with them, we reflect on them, we deal with them, we reject the weight that may, may slow us down and we reconnect with the God of our future. Because he's the one who has a purpose and a plan and a destiny for us all to fulfill. So that is the message for today on, on, on Father's Day, that God, the good, good father, the ultimate father that there ever, has ever been and ever will be, he wants to get our attention. He wants us to be looking in the direction that he calls us to look, which is forward into all that he has purposed and planned for us. But in order to fully do that, we maybe have to address some of the stuff in our past. We have to take a look back to deal with those things. But like I said, the message of this morning is don't get stuck looking back. Reflect on what has been. Reject what is not good and not useful and that will weigh us down. But then reconnect with the God of your future and of your destiny. This morning, God wants to heal your wounds. God wants to give you wisdom that you can learn from mistakes. And God wants to transform your weakness so that you're a stronger person, ready to walk into all that he has purposed and planned for you. I hope that helps. I hope that has inspired you. I hope it's maybe challenged you a bit to, to take a look, to take some time uh, to just reflect on what's been to ask God to show you the things from your past that, that you do need to take a moment to address and to deal with and then ask him to minister into so that you're ready for what comes next. And, and like this, this lockdown season, as things continue to change and we, we maybe will start to move out of this into a new season, a new normal, then maybe it's a time for you in your life to, to get ready for the new season that God has for you. Get ready for what God wants to do in your life and through you to tell other people about him. God bless you.